Ikigai driven, follow your passion. Oh my god, 600 horsepower! All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be installing the pistons and rods into the block. I have my pistons and rods all assembled together. You've seen that in the last episode. What we're gonna do is clean each of the cylinders with automatic transmission fluid. Once we verify that all the bores and cylinders have been cleaned, then we'll start putting each individual piston and rod in here. After looking over the footage, I realized that I didn't get to show you how to drop the crank into the block. For me to quickly go over this, you would have to put assembly lube in each of the bearings. Assembly lube on the block side and the girdle side, so back and forth. You put assembly loop there, you want to install a new crank rear main seal. And after installation, you can see how smoothly, how effortlessly this crank just spins in there. Back to the piston and connecting rod installation. I got a paper towel over here. Some automatic transmission fluid. And the reason why we use automatic transmission fluid is because it, it acts like a detergent. It is a detergent. And you just wanna run the paper towel in here, all the corners. Look at the second pass. Still kinda dirty. Run it one more pass. You want to repeat the cleaning process for the second, third, and fourth cylinder. Now that the block is cleaned, and we're getting the pistons ready. We wanna make sure that the block is covered so no dust gets in there, especially because we just cleaned it. Now you want to install the piston rings onto the piston. I've color coded the picture. You can see that the top ring goes to the red part, the second ring goes to the blue part, and the oil control rings into the green section. Now you want to clock your piston ring gaps as you can see, the front of the motor is facing the top of the screen, the bottom of the motor on the bottom side, which is also the transmission side. You can see that the top ring, the very first ring, is clocked around 3 o'clock, the second ring, 9 o'clock, the top oil ring gap is about 10 o'clock, and the bottom oil ring gap about 8 o'clock. Alright guys, so now I'm going to be dropping my first piston and rod in there. We're using a Wysco tapered 87 millimeter ring compressor. So we're going to slide this through here. As you see, it starts compressing the rings. Apply a little bit of assembly lube to the connecting rod bearing. You want to make sure the skirts go into the bore first. There we go. You want to squirt, make sure this ring compressor is squared. And then give it a light push. If at any point you feel resistance, don't keep pushing. So now we have this piston in. I'm gonna loosen this clip. Put the motor on its side for a few seconds. Want to make sure this journal is properly lubricated. Rod journal. 
rod cap. So, gonna pick up the rod. You want to make sure the tangs line up. So make sure this tang goes on this side. Now that the rod cap is on, I'm gonna get we're at 50 foot pounds from yesterday. 50 foot pounds there. 50 foot pounds there. Finally, all the pistons are in. So nice. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today. That's basically how you drop the pistons into the motor. It's looking so clean, so fresh. Again, thank you guys so much for your support on this. Um, like I said, I've never built an engine before, so I still don't know if this thing is actually gonna work. Everything seems to be working or spinning relatively effortlessly. So hopefully things go well. Thank you. Yeah. And guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.